You guys ready? Ready. Yes, sir. Yep. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> ready. <laughs> Get us over here. Okay. Oh, cool taxi driver. I know. So fucking psyched. So you talking to me? You talking to me, man? <laughs> <laughs> no, nope. I may be talking to you, but I'm looking at Silva Shepherd when she was right. young. Know. <laughs> she was really young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. People, welcome to. Hold on a second. Like, we going live? We are live. People, welcome to episode number two hundred and thirty-nine of the Cobra Cast podcast with me. I will be a designated driver tonight because I am not drinking. <laughs> After the last one, it ain't happening tonight. So, anyways, we got Brother Stone in the house. Let's hit this party. What's up? How y'all doing? What the hell is that? That's your intro, man. No, it's not. Uh oh. You know what? <laughs> this is the intro. That's the intro. <laughs> You're listening to Cobra Cast. The cobra injects deadly venom through its fangs, like ta toxins through a pair of hypodermics. Is the Cobra Cast, and here's your host, Bobby Sharon. Got it. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> what, Technology. What that is right there. This is what I, I do for every podcast, and people are like see me like going like this. Is I always try to share the live feed in the time that the intro goes. So some nights I make it, and sometimes I know tonight. I made it, so yes. Right Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> hey, it's a good feat, though. Every once in a while when it happens, you know. So how you guys doing? Doing, doing good. good. Hanging doing good. in there? You guys yeah. survived 512? Yeah, yeah. We loved it out there. It was it was hard work, but man, it was uh Omar made it fun. And he, he makes everything fun. He's he's a fun dude. We we're just talking about him uh, for a little bit. Yeah, the stories I have about that guy, you know. <laughs> Just, cr- just open that door just a little bit because it's going to get hot in here. And that the AC can pump in there. Beautiful. Sweet. Anyways, we got Lee, we got Brad, and we got Bobby in the house. You're the one from Elgin, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The home of the sausage? Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> got some good sausage out there. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, the only problem is, though, is when you have people come in and visit, you, you know what they want? Sausage? And you know how much you eat sausage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like sausage, 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 sausage. I was like, okay, I'm the... So you don't, you don't eat a whole lot of sausage? Not much anymore. Really? Okay. But, you know, there's other things on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, it's, it is the sausage capital... Of the world, of I the think, world, actually. Yeah. Much, yeah. I had a buddy, I had some comedian buddies out in California. They came in a couple of years ago, and one of them wanted me to take them to Elgin. Because he, re- he was researching barbecue online, you know, in L.A. And he goes, it was either Franklin's, you know, or Elgin. Yeah. You know, and I, or Lockhart, one or the other. Yeah, Lockhart. Yeah, yeah Lockhart yeah, was good. And then I, I think I opted, I took him over to Black's there you downtown, yeah. you know. So. Well, a lot of people don't know about in Blue, which is just a little further uh, east and uh, north of Elgin, you have Snow's Barbecue. And Snow's only does it on Saturday. And you get in line, and you wait, and sometimes you get stuff to take with you, and sometimes you don't. Like so Franklin, same thing, yeah. yeah you're still but working on that endorsement deal with them, right? It's yeah. a, Get it's up on that mic just a little bit. You're still working on that Bigger. endorsement deal with them, right? Well, I'm trying, <laughs> but, uh, but Every, they make good – They it's if you ever get a chance to go out there, you should – it's a it's a hoot. I mean, it's good stuff. I tell the bands to try to get Whataburger, the Whataburger endorsements. That's what they need. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. How cool, how cool would that be to get a Whataburger endorsement? Oh, that'd be beautiful. It, it's great, but the truth is, is if you really, like – Okay, if you're gonna just do Texas Waterburger, great. But if you're really gonna hit the roads, what you need? It's Waffle House. <laughs> Waffle House. That, you is have the wa- that is true. You, Waffle House is it. I if you, about if that. you don't get it smothered, covered, and stepbrothered, you just out the door. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's true. I didn't think about that. But not every town has a Waffle House. Though. That's well, the thing. You know, Waffle House just kind of moved into the Texas area. I mean, they're around now, but for a while there, it was just like if you had you had to hit hit that East Coast kind of thing, which yeah, which for a while there, I was doing a lot of that, and so you you know you you you'd go three hours and hit the Waffle House. Well, I know they have them in Colorado because when I played a gig up there like twenty years ago, they um that's where we had Thanksgiving was a Waffle House. Waffle House. <laughs> yeah, in uh, Colorado Springs. When I remember, so oh, but I got to bring this up before we go any further. We're gonna play some music tonight. We got a couple of tracks from Brother Stone's new was it album or uh, EP? We'll, EP. Call it EP? we'll call it an EP. EP. We'll call it an EP. Um, so if you're listening live right now, you'll probably be able to hear them. After this is over, you probably won't be able to hear them. <laughs> Because I got hit the past couple of episodes, even though I have permission from everybody in the room to play it on it. Um, Facebook, for some weird reason, is telling me um, I don't know if I have permission or if it's copywritten or, you know, whatever, whatever. So if you want to go watch it since an entirety with the music, you know, listen to the audio podcast, which is on, you know, Apple, you know, iTunes, Spotify iHeartRadio, et cetera, et cetera, or go over to YouTube and watch it over there on the CobraCast channel over there. So, uh, yeah, so they've been hitting me up lately, and it's kind of, man, it's kind of bumming me out, you know, because my main oh. audience is on Facebook Live, you know? Right. Well, so, and it really kind of bumps you out even worse because you guys put so much hard work and money into all these tunes and going recording. 512 ain't cheap, I know that for a fact. You no, know? sir, it's not. You know, uh, if you've seen the way Omar dresses, you'll know why. But anyways, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we caught him on the holiday. Uh, caught him on the holiday, so he yeah. came in pretty, pretty low key. But uh, he was dressed all nice on Fourth of July and stuff. Boy, looking good, new haircut and everything. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, he usually looks pretty scraggly and shit when I see him. No, but anyways, you guys, I, you guys put so much energy into this stuff, and I mean, you know, you're in the recording studio and you want it to be heard. This is a perfect platform to, you know, for people to hear, you know, music, and uh, you know, we're getting hit. So hopefully, well, so 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 for Facebook land, you know the people that wrote the songs that you will hear in this podcast are in this room and have given permission, <laughs> explicit to, permission. To, to let him <laughs> play them. So Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, I know where you are. <laughs> yeah. I'll hunt you. I know you where down. you are. <laughs> Lars, I, I Lars isn't here. Down. I will hunt you down. <laughs> I know where you are, Mark Zuckerberg. So anyway, you and your little cronies just let oh this one podcast alone and leave the rest of them no, alone leave the, too. Just leave the whole podcast alone, yeah. not just the episode. The all of them. No, no, that's why I said I, re, I, re, I re corrected myself. Yeah, all yeah. of them, leave them all be because yeah. people who come here are coming here and giving permission because they want their music to be heard on a larger scale. So leave it be. It, I mean, it's different. Like if I'm up here playing like like Prince music or Van Halen or, you know what I mean? Stuff that's right. copywritten, you know, that has, you know, stuff you need permission for. But for local artists that don't have any kind of deals whatsoever, or, I mean, they're just kind of producing it by themselves and putting that, it out. That's well why we're here. I yeah. don't <laughs> understand it. It doesn't make any sense to me, you know? Exactly. Well, but you're so, not protecting me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't, I just don't get it. You know what I mean? So I've been kind of, I've been like, right, you know, sending emails to them, haven't heard anything back. Um, everybody's getting pinched for it though, so I don't know what the deal is. Big tech. Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, big big brother. I don't know what they're what they what they think they're gonna get off of you guys, you know, for two songs that you haven't even released yet, <laughs> you know, with no record deal. You I'll know. sue. <laughs> right. <laughs> you're probably on a you're probably on a payment plan, not a five one two to fucking take care of this thing. You know, it's like, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, yeah, pretty off, much. <laughs> Omar, we got like ten bucks today. I'll pay you ten bucks tomorrow, kind of shit. Well, you know? my daughter doesn't know she's going to be cleaning the studio for the next couple of weeks, oh, so I'm going to let her know. <laughs> oh, good. I have, I'll have a couple of days off then. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I don't do toilets. That's the only yeah. thing. You but. know what's weird about that place? I remember that first one over there. You know, you, have you guys done the five one two show yet? No, we're. No. We, Are you going to do it? Uh, we would like to. Okay, we're trying, but we, we, we haven't. We haven't been. Uh, I think they sh they just wrapped up the season. They or? did, and they've got the call the call outs for for next season. And I've 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 sent an, uh, an email. And hopefully, sent we'll an email. Sent it's yeah. It's, it, <laughs> I sent an email. You're in there with the man. Why don't you just ask him? He said he, <laughs> well, said, he, he said it's you got to go. Oh, get, oh <laughs> shit! So, okay. You know, he's just like 
So I, I, was, I wonder if he's trying to tell us something. I don't know. Probably. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think that's it at all. He, well, he puts. I mean, <laughs> he's put a lot of a lot of cool bands on there. Yeah. You know, and, oh yeah. Uh, Definitely. A lot of bands you wouldn't think would go on there or on there. I, I was like really surprised that he put those certain bands on there because they're not like really his kind of style or whatever. And, and none of and some of them haven't recorded if I want to, you know. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, I didn't know yeah. that was a prerequisite. So no, I don't think if it is, then we're golden. <laughs> I don't think it is that you have to record there well, in know, order to be on it. I, don't I know think that's uh, it. Black Thorn was on Black Thorn Halo. Yeah, and they yeah. did their stuff with Kevin. So, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and but I, I their... think it's just if it's good music, they're going to put it on. And yeah. I haven't I, honestly, I watch, I watch that show just as much as I do this one, and yeah. and I have not been disappointed. So yeah, I saw a great band called New Offenders from Houston on there. Yeah, really good. There's there's just every every band that's pretty much on there is top notch. I don't get that station up here. So I have to watch it on YouTube. That's what I do. Yeah. Oh yeah. Up over here on the TV. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I, I have to do it too. Cause so I'm out in the in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So I'll either watch, when I'm in here I'll be watching like you know like Joe Rogan or Joey Diaz on a podcast or I'll have Omar show up or you know uh, Dave TV Dave Pruitt I'll have him up there. Have you done his show yet? We have. Yeah. Cool. We did just just uh, like a month or two before he quit doing the live band. So we were very fortunate. Thank you very much, Dave. Yes, we love it, you, buddy. It helped us get a lot of bookings too. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. was on there, believe it or not. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. <laughs> we uh he really stepped up for us. We you know he he had a, a band cancel on him and so we 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 had never played live pretty much. Well we did one show and, and then we went out and did his his television thing and yeah. We were real concerned because we were still, I mean, really green. And we had done our, you know, you do your rehearsal thing, but getting yeah. in front of some cameras and with no audience in front of you, that's a that's a mind. And how cold is that room? Holy oh. moly. It's like a freaking, <laughs> it's like a, it's like a freezer in that joint. Yeah. <laughs> I went in there to do it. I just did like an, uh, like maybe a 15, 20 minute interview segment after a band. I'm in there with a park on, man. You know, my ex-girlfriend was dying. She's like, it's freezing to death. I mean, I'm like, dude, this is cold in here, you know? Well, you know Nathan, right? Na- yeah, all fairs, yeah. yeah. When, Nathan, a bunch of times. when Nathan walked in, he had, you know, he always wears the thing, but he had the park and all that. And it, it, this is July 6th yeah, yeah, of yeah, last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. It's blazing hot outside, and he walks in. So I walk in after him, I'm going like, oh, I get it now. <laughs> it's freezing in there. <laughs> it's it funny. Fun, it's funny when he comes up here, if, if you know Nathan, I don't know how, how well you know him, but uh, he wears the patchouli oil. Yes. And every time he comes in here, this room will smell like patchouli for like about two weeks. So it's like, it's really heavy duty patchouli oil. Everybody comes in, man, is that patchouli oil? I'm like, yeah, that's that's Nathan Alvarez right there. I think, <laughs> Big I think, Nate. I think that's pretty much the uh, 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 prerequisite for dancers that they all have yeah, a little. All bit. those dudes, yeah. 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 We, we did, uh, we, they were just the last two weeks, we did uh, shows with them in San Angelo and Austin. I remember after coming back from St. Angelo, I could still smell the patchouli. <laughs> I love you guys. Though, Don't give so. him a hug. Don't give him <laughs> a hug. Look at that shit. I just I like. Can't. I love those guys. I <laughs> hug them all. Yeah, we love we love those guys. That we um, D- Nathan and I. Okay, so Nathan was here a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And um, I after that show, I I pulled up a a, a, a picture. Um, Tommy Mac, you know Tommy Mac. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. Tommy Mac put up a, a, a deal. It's like you know, I came back into town and or I came to town in in '87, and I I hooked up with these guys and we did this show. And on that bill was Young Thunder, Dancer, and a band that I had back in the day, Nervous Wreck. So I showed it to him. I said, "Dude, this is how far we you go." You were back. Nervous Wreck. I was Nervous Wreck. That, that was my sounds my familiar. Day. Back in the day, he, what, made, he just makes me a Nervous Wreck now. What 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 <laughs> year did that end? Well, we 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 were together just bef- uh, until about eighty eight, and then I joined Raging Saint. Oh shit, you're in Raging Saint, okay? And then okay, I left. Now it's all coming and then, together. And now. then when Raging Saint kind of f- the the real Raging Saint fell apart, I don't count the other ones after that. But uh, we put together Nervous Wreck va- version two, and so that one ended in ninety three. Oh wow, I got here in ninety one, so. <laughs> So we did, we did Palace Coup at that time too. We know? did Palace Coup, but right, uh, right after, uh, right after Raging Saint, uh, we did Palace Coup for about uh, eight or nine months. Yeah, and then uh, it's and then t- it's so funny to see Nathan and Jackie and those guys, and you know, <laughs> yeah. they're still doing it. They're yeah. still fucking doing it. They do it very well, well too. Oh yeah. Okay, so Nathan's a beast, man. I'm telling you. So you know, you have history here, like we do, and so, and we're I'm maybe going back a little further, but um, 
this past show we did at uh, Texas Mist, which was the uh, Howard Family Benefit, which turned out very well. Thank you, everybody who came who came out and get a load of this. We raised four hundred and twenty dollars <laughs> to dongle. I mean, mm-hmm. Stoner Band Deluxe. We raised four hundred twenty dollars. Yeah. So anyway, uh, but uh, okay, where was I going? I went. I went to the. I went the next day. Over at Hanover's. Yeah, oh, I man. heard that turned out really good. There yeah, was it was a big fun. We had a good time, yeah. Good. So uh, where was I going with this, guys? Okay, so we did we, were in, we had to go to the studio the next day. That we, were gonna, uh, we, didn't, we couldn't do Hanover's because we had to go to the studio. Well, yeah, that is true. I forgot because I got I, I got tri- sidetracked with the uh, 420 thing because I thought that was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> you guys actually raised $420? $420. Yes. For real? For yeah. real. For real. <laughs> Not kidding you. Exactly. That's 400. funny. Okay, so That's like a steamroller thing or something. Four <laughs> twenty. It, 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 it was too funny. I mean, I I walked up to Jim and I said they were dongles on stage and I said, hey, look, I want to grab the door. I'm going to present it to them during their show. I want right, to just yeah. hand it right to him. You say, look, you know, thank you, everybody. <clears throat> so he hands it to me and he's like, man, here's three hundred and eighty bucks. And I'm like, three hundred and eighty bucks. That's pretty dang good. And he goes, man, y'all did great tonight. You know, so like, and I said, wait a minute. I sold a couple shirts. Well, actually, that's not true. <laughs> I sold a shirt, and Tim Murphy, who Tim Murphy from the Backroom Days, that's this right. was yeah, I remember this that whole one. show was like Backroom 1989. Yeah, yeah, 1989. It was such a trip. But anyway, so Tim Murphy comes up to me. He's like, "How much is that?" And I said, four hundred. He goes, "Dude, another twenty dollars." <laughs> four twenty, dude. And I was like, ah, "You got to be awesome. kidding. This that's is too great. cool." So yeah, actually, four hundred twenty bucks. Wow. Which I don't know. I don't know what they raised on Saturday. I spent my whole weekend at Hanover's. I had the uh, was over there for Robert's benefit, and then I did the. If you know the band Three Thirty Three, oh yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Josh Roush, the keyboard player, he's in like four different ba- or three different bands, and so it was his birthday, his thirtieth birthday, and he oh, all the all the all the baby. bands that he plays baby. in all were on that oh, one bill. bill. He was working. He was working hard. Yeah. <laughs> he's 30. He can do it. Yeah, 31. He's 30. Yeah. He can do it. <laughs> he could be my kid. I told yeah. him, I said, dude, I was 21 Literally. when you were born and shit, for Christ's sake. He might be my kid. Don't my kid. I was going to say. <laughs> I'm like, hey, wait, hey, is your mom here? Yeah. Wait, where's your mom? Is your mom around? <laughs> Don't tell your mama. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, because it's funny. It's all, everybody's like in that band, you know, like Josh is like 30, then Danny's 40, and the rest of them are kind of in between like 40 and 50, you know, or almost 50. Tony's like 48 now, so. Oh. I was gonna say. He, okay, I mean, so now I remember what I was gonna say. I was talking about the show we did at the at Texas Mist. Mm-hmm. Okay, and uh, we had talked about dancer and guys and dancer and myself going way back when. Uh, the first band, which was the Mighty F Holes, you remember a band called Larry the yeah. Hit. Larry yeah. Joe's a good buddy of mine. Oh yeah, I've known so, Larry for fucking thirty so years. So Larry, Larry, He's still energetic. Larry and Gilbert from the Hit are the Mighty F. Larry Drozd. So yeah. we we. Oh, Larry, oh, we bring and them Gilbert, in, I'm sorry. and so with them first, us second, dance, it was like, like I said, backroom 1989. So anyway, I, that's where I was going. I just want to mention the mighty f holes. They were, they need to put themselves a page on Facebook so people can like it and know where they're going to be playing next because that band is effing good. They are good. You can say fucking. It's all right. I know, but yeah. I, my mom and I, my, you know, my mom and my, <laughs> curse. my, all right. my aunt who's a nun. <laughs> She's a nun, really? Oh, yeah, so I got I, I to be good then. We we. We thought I thought she was going to be at the show at the Texas Miss. Actually, she, that's, she, a, that's a good idea. She wasn't. She, you know, and I was just like, you know, okay, everybody. The dongo play, dongo played, right? Yes, they yeah. did. Okay, they well, that's good. You don't want. Uh, yeah. you don't they want the. <laughs> well, they would have left. They, you know, she's my aunt, so she's in age. But uh, yeah, yeah. but she she would. But I was like, okay, this is probably not the one they need to be at. And I, so I gave them the fair warnings, so like, okay, you do know that. We are a rock band, <laughs> so the <laughs> subject matter could be, well, we're a rock band, and she's yeah. like, well, we do know it's a, a metal club, and I'm just like, yeah, but it's a, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, it's okay for those much. guys, but for me, it's <laughs> well, yeah. you know, that same package is playing. I think September 12th, we're playing that sen- the same four no, bands no, 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 playing 20th. September 20th at uh, Black Sparrow in Taylor. Taylor, yep, been over there. So that it one's going to be the exact same lineup. Right? I've got yeah. a, I've got a, he, well, with Larry living in in, in Taylor. Yeah, he was Dongle, yeah, yeah. Dongle's in Taylor. I'm in, I'm in Elgin, but I, I work at the golf course in Taylor. So you I, look like you work at a golf course. So I, I say that. I, I, uh, I <laughs> it's a good gig though. I get it, gig, right? Yeah, I've got good. a huge beer drinking contingency there. That's what, what do you do over there? If I can ask, I work in the pro shop. He really, sell, he yeah. drinks beer. Yeah, are you a pro? <laughs> no, I, right, I pro cool. at selling beer. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, for so, you. Well, truth is, at at 
Mustang Creek. Plug for Mustang <laughs> Creek Golf Course, Taylor, <laughs> Texas. Uh, we sell more beer than we do tea times. I wouldn't so, doubt it. <laughs> We so do like my kind of course, and, mo- and most people around town come to the the, the uh, golf course to drink beer after work because it's cheaper than the other places. Hey, have you invited Omar Vallejo to go play golf at your place? We've talked about it. Yes, sir. Uh, don't go with him. Just let him go by himself. <laughs> <laughs> just, just watch. Him. Just make sure he doesn't drive the cart into the, to the oh, pond. Oh man! I remember Paul. You know, you know who Paul Ren is. Yes. You heard of Paul Ren? Yes. Paul Ren was telling me some stories about him. Him and uh, Omar. Going out, I, I, it was somebody's bachelor party or some shit. I can't remember who was oh with boy. him, but he said they were out playing golf, and it was this. I remember one time he was supposed to do a podcast up here, and I, I scheduled the whole month out pretty much. I still got some spots to fill this for this month, but um, and I had him on a certain date, and I called him up that day. I'm like, dude, are you good for tonight? And he's like, man. I'm golfing at the Yellow Rose, the Yellow Rose Golf Tournament tonight. I don't think I'm gonna make it tonight. I'm like, all right, buddy. <laughs> so I got him in the next week. He was out golfing over at the the Yellow Rose, uh, oh yeah, golf tournament that they have every year. Yeah. So probably not a good idea if he did show up. Oh no, yeah, I don't, uh, he wouldn't have made it. I mean, it was like noon and he was already, you know, half, you know, half shit face. So <laughs> I can five foot any green. Yeah, he's he's an animal. I'll tell you, he's a, he's a different being. <laughs> Unreal. You know what? So okay. So why don't we? Why don't we? So we get away with one of these songs. How's that? <laughs> I'm, all, I'm I'm I'm, I'm down with it. Gonna play it. We have. They have permission to perform. We have permission. We have permission. We have, have permission, permission for le- for for uh, what do you call it? For um. We have given. Lift off. We have given permission <laughs> right. to play yeah. our music on this show. This one's for you, Jeff. Anything about yeah. this tune? Which Jeff Zuckerberg? Z- oh, 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 Mark, yeah, Mark, yeah. Mark, Mark. Is it Mark? Whatever his name is. Mark Zook. Mark Zucker. Zook. Let's no. we'll call him Zook. Anything about this tune before we? we is this the world debut or what? This How is we, the world debut. This is the world debut. debut. World debut. This is the, okay, so we're, we're loading them up on digital formats, but they're not there yet. So this yet. is this is it. This, this is, is it. Like Michael Jackson, this is it. <laughs> well, I, well, no, no, no. It didn't do too good for him, yeah, wait, wait. but I mean, hopefully that's better for you guys. I need, I, Bob, uh, a, different, Bobby, a different this is it. Bobby, yeah, okay. can, you, can you do us, since since Michael Jackson has been brought into the to this, this story here, can you please do us your best Michael Jackson impersonation? I can do Michael Jackson dead on you. Really? See? Yeah, why? Yeah. No pun intended. No. <laughs> That's not. That's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't meant to be. <laughs> that ain't funny. Dude. Michael Jackson, a musical genius. <laughs> <laughs> He's a musical genius. That's what he is. Genius. He's a great right. composer because I know he composed well. So this is this one's <laughs> called "Don't Tell Your Mama." This is "Don't Tell Your Mama." So what can't we tell your mama? What do we have to listen to find out? Well, you know there is a section instead of a guitar oh. solo. We have a uh, a a um, a mumbled section there. We brought Barry White back. <laughs> that uh, <laughs> that um, explains why you should not tell your mama. But you, you people will hear, figure it out. All it's right. not that hard. Let's hit it. <laughs>
world debut. There it is. World debut. The world debut. <laughs> so hopefully everybody on Facebook heard it right now because it might. Next time you look at it, <laughs> it when this is done, it. it'll be just silent. You won't be able to hear anything. It's just this naked air. That's all it is. Naked air. Naked air. It's my new band, Naked Air. That's a good I like name that. for a band, Naked Air. <laughs> naked Air. Yeah, naked Air. <laughs> Oh, that could man. be a song, Naked Remember, Air. There was a really yeah. kick-ass band back in the day from Dallas called Naked Truth. Naked Truth. They were pretty pretty good. I'll, I'll, ask, I'll, ask, I'll have to ask Paul Renner for he because he's from up there. That's where he lives now. He was up in Dallas. Yeah, they were they were they were doing it right around when um Solinger. You you ever heard of oh, Solinger? Shit, yeah, well yeah, Solinger, Johnny Solinger, he's a sing for Skid Row. Six Skid Row. I remember seeing him. Oh God. He was solo at the time. It was, it was be- Solinger. No, no, but he that was the name of the was band. It, I know, yeah, I remember that, but I'm trying to think, was it the Solinger Banner or was it him solo? They played over it. Remember Sneakers back in the day? Oh, yeah. He played over there and got booed off the stage. Like, really? I got the fuck on her. I mean, they're like just, wow. they, oh, yeah, they totally tore him up. Well, And the next thing you know, he's in Skid Row. He was in Skid Row for a good good chunk of change. Yeah, there. you know, Austin wasn't very kind to bands that came, unless you were called Pantera or something, you know, but <laughs> or King's X, you know, but. For the most part, other Texas bands, Austin was kind of cruel too. Um, I mean, I did shows. I did shows with uh, Solinger here in Austin, and they just couldn't do it. We would do shows up there with in, at the basement, which was Pantera's. Yeah, club. Right. oh yeah. We would do shows with the basement, the, uh, yeah. with them guys at uh, them and Winter Cat. Remember Winter Cat? Well, I was going to interject <coughs> something there. When I first started coming to Austin, I was playing in bands in San Antonio, and we were treated well. Yeah, by the Austin. Musicians, well, and may, maybe, maybe, but you know, uh, well, San Antonio is different because San Antonio is San Antonio. It's a metal town, it's big yeah. Metal exactly. Town. Yeah, huge metal town. You know, and, and a lot yes, of it is and <laughs> a, monstrous. And so, a lot of those, uh, well, a lot of those metal guys <laughs> would start coming up to Austin because, well, you know, for a while there, Ozzy was banned. Oh yeah, for years. And so when After Ozzy would play, when Ozzy would play, there was don't quiz on the Alamo, my friend. There was two tours where he couldn't go down there, so mm-hmm. they played here in Austin. So all that big metal contingency from San Antonio would come up, and after the after the the shows, what they do, they go drinking <coughs> somewhere, and usually they would go to either Steamboat or if back they were wanting metal, Steamboat metal uh, back room, back or, room yeah. or Liberty Lunch or or uh, what was uh, Shark Club slash Sneakers, you know, up north. Yeah, I wasn't here when it was Shark yeah. Club. I got here when it was Sneakers. Sne- it wasn't much at Shark Knowing Club. if it was San Antonio yeah. fans and musicians, they were drinking before, during, and, and after. after. Yeah. <laughs> and on the way. I, I can live to tell you that's the truth. <clears throat> Dude, uh, the, when they, okay, so the show that uh, Ozzy, I want to say it was Bark at the Moon, and Metallica was the opening <laughs> slot, Ooh, yeah. and it was Master of Puppets. Okay, mm-hmm. so they had the stage with the crosses on it, and it was so cool. I'm right in front of Cliff, okay? <coughs> and I can, I can do him, too. And I know you can. That's not nice, though. And so oh, uh, and so, just as soon as the lights go down, okay, so, you know, it's the Irwin Center, and they got all the, the chairs on, on the ground there, you know, ground, lo- ground floor level. Yeah. And so as soon as the lights go down, the chairs start, you know, they used to be connected together, and they would they start ripping them up, and they start going, backwards like this they're just being panned okay so everybody just rushes okay and so at that point i'm about from me to the corner of of your room here from the stage and i'm just thinking this this is so crazy and there's this girl she was a pretty girl and she was with a group of guys and each of these four guys had a hand somewhere on her oh geez Okay, so and there, a chair hit her in the face. There's there, there's there's a hand on her somewhere, and I'm not talking o- over. I'm talking under. Okay, yeah. there's a hand on. I'm just and my buddy. Who's maybe they're holding me, her up. <laughs> maybe yeah, maybe she was drunk. They so, hold her up. So my buddy Texas chivalry. Oh, there you go. I know. My buddy goes over there and he kind of just goes gives it oh, the, little, the little hand on the whoa, whoa, on the whoa, tush, whoa. you know. And and it was like she knew that was a foreign hand. She turned around and looked at him like, "What the hell are you doing?" But hey, she these had guys other, have permission. But for these four <laughs> other guys, her name's Zuckerberg, <laughs> right? But anyway, that those, yeah, those, your mother. I think, I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think, his grandmother, one or the other. Yeah, I think those San Antonio guys uh, brought their attitude and stuff up here. Let me tell you things around here. To this day, 
if Legs Diamond went Love down, em. To, Love em. went down to AT and T Center, they could sell that whole place out. You're absolutely right. And they could come to Austin, and they couldn't sell one ticket. <laughs> no. Yeah, exactly. I've seen it happen both both ways. A band I was in uh, that I sang for. I think one of the guys lives here now. No, Rick, the Is singer. It, yeah, Rick, he he, he, was, he lived in San Antonio. Now he lives in uh, El Campo. Yeah, because I have some friends that hang out with him all the time. Yeah. If it's the same guy I'm thinking of, but to this day, yeah. you can go down to San Antonio. And Legs Diamond are still a big thing down there. Yes. Are they still playing at all? Or No. Uh, Rick, when Rick moved, they did, and they got another guy named John Levest. They're, they're out of L.A. And they played together for a few years, did a couple of European things, but I think now it's all done. In fact, the, the keyboard player and rhythm guitar player, Michael Prince, he uh, actually helped co-produce or, or engineer like Celine Dion albums. Oh, wow. Stuff. Yeah. So he, Beyonce and stuff like that. He's also the keyboard whiz. So, yeah, I remember when I moved here, I, my roommate at the time was from San Antonio. That's all he talked about oh, yeah. was Legs Diamond. I love and him too. No one else knew who they were except for this him. Anywhere from San Antonio, it was like that was like you know <laughs> yes. they were ground. awesome. Yeah, but it was like you know like it was Ozzy how how Ozzy is to like to the to the mainstream crowd. It's like that's how Legs Diamond was to him and you know to that crowd. Was it Legs Diamond and was it uh, Van Halen came out the. The same month, the Fan Alien One album. They came out a year later. They were was signed it, a year was, later. Was yeah. it a year later? Okay, I thought they were came yeah. out. They were real, real close to each other. I saw them blow Triumph off the stage. Well, Legs Diamond. Yeah. So did they ever get to tour big or just? Yeah, they had two. They had uh, two albums on Mercury, and I think one on an indie label. Okay. And they, I mean, they went out with Kiss. They went out oh, you wow. know, when Kiss was big, and yeah, they did a lot of tours like that. Ted Nugent. They they did a whole. I think world tour with him when they. So what happened over. to him? They just kind of just fizzled, or yeah, just it wasn't happening. They're on. Can I say that? Yeah, they were on Mercury Records, and did not tell you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you well, know? I mean, Mercury was well, it turned Mercury Polygram. I think at the time it was. Yeah. Um, they had all the metal stuff back then, but it was all the pop metal that they had. You know, the Kiss and Bon Jovi's, and you know all those guys. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, <coughs> Kiss was me. Casablanca for a long time. Well, yeah, but time. What, what happened to Casablanca is... Went broke, right? Neil Bogart sold it to Mercury Polygram. That's <laughs> yes. what happened to them. Yeah, yeah, so that's what he <laughs> snorted the record <laughs> label. Yeah, yeah. He snorted their record <laughs> label. Yeah, that was all. Well, he, he had to buy property in Peru, so he had to sell the label. Pretty much. Yeah, I mean, back in the 70s, that's all those record labels, you know, payola and cocaine and fucking oh, yeah, weed, yeah. and I mean, that's all it was. Yeah. Would you love to have been a uh, rhinoplasty doctor with all those oh, deviated geez. septums? Man, you'd have made a fortune. I've heard so many stories about people's like part of their cartilage just dropping out of their nose and everything else. <laughs> like Stevie Nicks was one of them. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I heard. Pass, I heard. A, pass a handkerchief through your nose. Yeah. Well, no. It's just like the, just a you know piece of just piece of cartilage just oh, fell out of her nose. <laughs> oh man. That, that's one thing I'm glad I never kind of got into. You know, I tried it once a long time ago. I didn't like it. I don't know if it was like the real thing, but I'd never touched it. I mean, in like 30 years, I haven't touched it. I mean, it's just, I've never was into it. I never, you know, I've never, I've never, I've never been a pill popper. I've never been a, a bit, I smoked weed when I was a kid, you know, but um, like now, if I take, like even allergy medicine says take two, I'll have to take one. Right. Because anything fucks me up. It's like, you know, so it's like <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, don't fucking, I'm a lightweight, you yeah. know, so. Give me Benadryl drill and I'll have my have heart failure. You know? Yeah, I'm like, I, you know, shit, being 51, it's like, man, I, I don't, you know, I don't need that kind of shit in my life now. I'm a little yeah. too old to be fucking a drug addict, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I played with that stuff when I was 18, yeah. 19, Not 20, a good retirement But plan. I was I was fortunate no. enough that had some scary stuff happen to me when I was young that just said, you know what? It's time to not yeah. do stupid stuff like that anymore. Well, I mean, don't do that. It's <laughs> even in, in my life, my personal life in the past year, I mean, I've lost so many people to it, you know. Yeah. Either you know a heroin overdose or a couple of them, you know, uh, just uh, amongst other things, and it's like, man, it's like you know, it just kind of goes to show you that it's just shit's it's nothing to be nothing to be played with, you know. No. It's just some rough shit. I'm with mm -hmm. you on that, you know. Yeah, I've been fortunate, you know. I have, I haven't really known so many people that have gone in the really deep end of it, you know. Yeah. Of course, I I disassociated <coughs> myself with that kind of crowd when I was twenty. So yeah, but I mean, I mean, when I was even in the Austin scene, there, I mean, there really wasn't a, a lot of that. No, there's like there a, wasn't. I mean, we we're drinkers, of course. Yeah, like yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised I still have a liver. Um, <laughs> but I mean, there's there was there was weed, there was weed, and there was pot. I mean, none of us had money for coke. I mean, money <laughs> for coke? What? <laughs> You know, most of I mean, us. We didn't, I don't even think any of us knew what it looked like. I need a gas for my truck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, we were like after gigs, man. I don't know how many, and I'm this. I'm sure this story will resonate. 
I mean, how many of us would go through Jack in the Box, like digging through for quarters in our in our console to get two tacos after a gig or something? You know what I mean? Wait a minute, I'm still doing that yeah, shit. Still doing so that? It's seven thirty-five. I hey, thought you, you said seven twenty-five. Yeah. <laughs> You're digging yeah. through, yeah. I mean, yeah. for me, that's it, my per diem for the whole week. <laughs> Damn for, it. for me, that's why. That's why I love playing Babe so much, dude. You get that. You get that that meal ticket. You know, right? Oh, Remember that? Shit? Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that, man. That, that <laughs> Hell was awesome. yeah. That was we will we will play Saturday night. And then we, we would always pick a Saturday night because we could leave our gear overnight, come tear it down the next day, and then we would get our, our meal ticket that Jim gave us. Where we, I think, was it Son that booked it at a time? Son or... or I think it was. Son, yeah. Son booked it for a while, Son, and then yeah. um, Jim booked it for a while. Yeah. And you get and you go over there and have your fucking your hamburger and your fries, and you're like, yeah, today's a good day, you know? Yeah. Oh, good. This is <clears> what? <throat> Sunday? I'm good till Wednesday. No, no, I wouldn't say that. But I mean, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. that's all you could afford. It's it's all you could afford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I used to the 39 cent hamburgers on Anderson Lane was like, and you'd be counting change to get to 39 cents, you know, plus tax, you know, so 45 cents or something like that. And it's like, please. where would you find those? You find those uh, happy hour buffets. Those are the ones. That oh, yeah. Those, those, oh yeah. Those you buy work. a couple of beer, a couple of you know, cheap beers. <clears throat> Taco, taco bar, you know, kind of shit. Man, we, we lived off of that stuff. Man. Dallas, Dallas used to have a real, <laughs> and I hated that place because I mean, back in the day, I was really, you know, it was all about hard rock and metal and all that. I wasn't doing the country thing. I wasn't into it. But uh, they had the best <laughs> they had buffet. 